he went to the Ivy, Bis Ivy School of Business in London, Ontario. He grew up in, house in a household similar to our own, and upon graduation took a career that allowed him to travel to almost 50 countries around the world. For most of us, that seems like the dream. However, the big chief retired and sought more from the world and from himself. So he decided to attend the two-year intensive residential Vedanta course at Chinmay Mission Sanvipani Sadhanalaya in India. Since then, he has traveled across America, Canada, and the world, making Vedanta relatable for people of all ages, especially young adults. He's spoken at places like the Office of the Pentagon in Washington and the Regional Mental Health Care Hospital in London. He also spends a lot of his time conducting camps for, and retreats for Chinmay Viva Kendra students who are aged 17 to 27. And that's where I've had the great fortune of learning from and spending time with the Vaichi for uh, many hours and days. Though, uh, through his inspiring and insightful lectures, he, showed us, he shows us how we can apply Vedanta in our daily lives to improve ourselves, our lives, and to attain true, unwavering happiness. Katunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samatrapa, Nevik Namkuru Medeva, Sarva Kadeshu Sarvada, Saraswati Namastupyam Parade Kamarupini, Vidyaram Pankarishami, Siddhe Bhavatume Sada, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha. As we get older, as time goes on, everyone becomes busier, the days become faster, yet longer at the same time. Faster yet longer, it's an interesting paradox. So I want everyone to just pause for a few moments, and I want you to close your eyes. And mentally, I want you to list the five richest people that you know. So scan your life, scan your mind, and list the five richest people you know. With your eyes still closed, I want you to now list the five most loving people that you know. People who express the most love. Scan your life, scan your mind. And finally, your eyes still closed, I want you to list five happiest people that you know. So scan your life and mind, find out who are the five happiest people that you know. Okay, you can gently open your eyes. Listing who the five richest people are was probably the easiest. You quickly filled up that list. Then when it came to the five most loving people, it became harder. Would you probably fill up that list too? But when it came to the five happiest people, it became much more difficult. Maybe you couldn't even identify 
5k. And you're thinking naturally the happy list is harder because it's subjective. The richness is objective. But love is subjective too. Prove to me that your parents love you or that you love your parents. You can't prove that. It's something that's subjective. So we do know how to measure that which is subjective. More deeply, my teacher had shared, tell me who you love and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you love, and I'll tell you who you are. If it's easy to fill in the five richest people, maybe that's what we love. Maybe that's our dream. Most loving, maybe that's what we are pursuing. Being happy, is that what we're pursuing? Regardless of what term you use, religion, spirituality, development, etc., to appreciate these terms, one must appreciate that they need to be happy, that they want to be happy. If someone doesn't have that appreciation, these are just words, religion, spirituality, development. You can keep on using synonyms, but they're just words. So this evening, we are going to explore religion versus spirituality. Like they're gonna fight against each other, you know? <laughs> like in Zoolander, break dance, you know? They're gonna <laughs> dance off. So religion versus spirituality. And I know this is a university. I know this is a university that focuses on pre-professionalism. Those are some of the labels that were <laughs> directed at me today. When we take up this subject, it is not from an academic lens. That's why I asked you to pause. Shake off that academic lens that you had on all day or all week or however many years you've been in university. We are going to take this up from a transformation lens, not from an academic lens. And it requires a different way of thinking. When I finished business school and I was doing commercial real estate for a few years, and then I moved to our ashram and studied our shastras, our scriptures. And our first test was on Tattvamukha. And when I got the test, I thought, in the same way that I thought in business school, it's just about how clever you are, right? <laughs> that is business, it's just about scheming and gimmicks <laughs> and all of that. So I'll, I'll approach this test in the same way. And I finished it and I was like, they're gonna be impressed <laughs> by my answers. And when I got it back, it said, more serious study needed. <laughs> totally. I needed that message to shape me from my academic perspective to my transformation perspective. I will speak for another 45 minutes or so, and then the last half hour, I'll leave for any questions that you may have. And I hope you have questions, because if you have questions, that means you're interested in the subject. So I hope you have questions. I may or may not be able to answer them, but do keep them with you. And I love I love the subject, I love the field, so I'm grateful to all of you for making this happen. There's people here I know in the room well, there's people in the room that I see once a year, there's people in the room I haven't seen for years, there's people in the room I've never seen ever. <laughs> and that's what's so cool about this subject and field that it brings people together in the best way.